your power in this house. I'm so glad that you are here. And I know that you've got something special for us in store this morning. I want to pray for the word that it is blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen and amen. Amen. You may be seated. What a wonderful privilege to have you here this morning. I know it's a long weekend, but I'm so glad that my God never goes on vacation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Nice seeing Dr. Marcus there at the back. Welcome with us. May God bless you with us. Amen and amen. I know that God has got something special for you in store this morning. Ah, oh, can I repeat that? I know that God has got something special for you in store this morning. That sounds a little bit better. Amen. I want to speak on the topic of worship this morning. And while I was going through my notes and preparing, my Anamri came in there last night. And she said, are you still busy? I said, yeah, I'm still busy. She said, she said I thought you've only got a few touch-ups to do. And that was after I've been about five hours in the study. I said, oh, I'm still busy. And you see, when you, when you start digging in the Word of God, you don't know when to stop. Because the more you dig, the more you will find. And I want to start this morning with John 4, 23 which most of you should know, it said, but now the time is coming. But now the time is coming. Indeed, it is here now when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Now look, it continues by saying, the Father is looking for those who worship Him in that way. And it was quite interesting when I, I think about two or three weeks ago, I started with the study. And what fascinated me was these two words that says, in spirit and in truth. And this morning, I'm only going to stand still on the subject of in spirit. Next week, the Onoki is starting. And after that conference, I will continue in truth. And I wondered by myself, what does it mean to worship in truth? What does it mean to worship in spirit? I remember a few weeks ago, myself and we, Simone, we went to rugby at um, Ellis, what no, it was at Loftus. And uh, we sat basically in the front row. And what was quite interesting to see Mac, Victor Macfield pass the field. And you couldn't believe the audience ran to him and they wanted his signature. They find anything to just get his signature. A piece of paper, a ball on their jersey, and then they wanted selfies. And I was wondering by myself this morning while I was standing here, I wonder how we would have reacted this morning if God, the Father, or Jesus walked into this place, or the Spirit, how would we react? I wonder if the worship would have been the same. I wonder if we would have seen Jesus in person this morning. I wondered... If the president, Prima would have walked in here this morning, how we would have reacted. And I'm not talking, I don't care which, which political party you support this morning, but it's just that honor to that person. I remember a few years ago, when we were still, Annemarie was managing in Gedi, our, our um, function center, um, Biscop Tutu walked in there. And it was amazing, the staff. Everybody wanted a picture of him. And then I said to anybody, we need to do the right thing, and we need to join in, and we sat at this table. And for the first time, we, we've actually learned him. What a noble man he was. 
But now the Bible comes and says, it says, by the time is coming indeed, it is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit. And I understand why John wrote this. Because it's easy to worship something when you see it physically. It's easy to react when you see somebody of stature and you bow before him. Or you honor him. But now the Bible says this. And I, I'm, I'm still only on the first slide. I'll see how far I get. Now the Bible says this, the Father is looking for true worshipers that can worship in spirit. What does it mean? It means although you cannot see God the Father, although you, not can, you cannot see the Holy Spirit, although you cannot see Jesus physically, what you need to understand this morning, they are here. You need to understand that the Spirit of God is here. I am looking for worshipers that understand although I'm not physically here, I am there. But if I look at our reaction when it comes to worship, I wonder if we understand that He is here this morning. So what we need to understand this morning as a starting point, that wherever you are, the presence of God is there. The way you talk, the way you react, He's with you. And I'm going to take you through Scripture now to prove that to you. But what God is looking for, He's looking for people that understand and that know wherever you are, He is in spirit, He's with you, He's behind you, you're never alone again. There's an old song that we sang, I will never be alone again. You see, you see, what we start, we need to start doing is we need to start acting like somebody that knows that the Spirit of God is within me. I don't know how I'm going to make it. Oh, 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 oh. My little grandson Noah, he can't say anything. He's about 10, 11 months old. And he can say, oh, 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 oh. I want to say, oh, 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 this morning. You see, that's what God is looking for. He's looking for, Pastor Elizabeth, He's looking for people that are acting according to the behavior of God. That is worshiping God in spirit. He's not here. You, don't, you can't see the outcome yet. You see the physically. You see this morning that I am sick, that I am in pain. You see that you are in financial difficulty this morning. You are whatever you are experiencing. That is what you are seeing physically this morning. But if you want to worship God in spirit, you need to see there's another outcome this morning. By His wounds, I am healed. I am more than a conqueror. I am going to make it this morning so three things are associated with worship by thanksgiving we acknowledge God's goodness by praise we acknowledge God's greatness and by worship we acknowledge God's holiness we acknowledge God for who he is we also acknowledge that God exists that's what worship means I'm not wondering. I'm not pondering. Ek wonder nie of hy dit vir my gaan doen nie. I said to somebody last week, we were sitting with somebody, and they said, Pastor, I don't understand why I cannot uh, uh, receive healing. I said, well, let's quickly do a test. Do you believe that God is alive? Yes. Do you believe that Jesus has died on the cross for you? Yes. Do you believe that by the healing power of God that you are healed? Yes. 
I say, what else do you need to do? She says, I doesn't know. She says, well, there, there are people that says I cannot be healed because I'm full of sin. And she's a child of God. She's honoring God. She's worshiping God. I said, you need to decide this morning to who you are going to listen. Are you going to listen to the enemy this morning? I don't care whether you get healed or not healed. The issue this morning, I must believe in the power of healing this morning. And that's what God is looking for. You see, we are focusing too much on what the outcome would be. And that's where the enemy wants us because he says you are not healed anymore. So therefore, he brings into questioning where the God exists. He brings into questioning where the God is the healing. He brings into questioning whether you are a child of God. I want to declare it this morning. I believe in God. I believe in the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe that He has died for me. I believe that He has been resurrected. He's alive with the God, the Father, and He died for me. That's where worship starts. That's where worshiping God in spirit starts this morning. Oh, hallelujah. You see, we want to make it so difficult that nobody can reach. No, brother, you must wait for a certain feeling. You must wait for a certain emotion. Oh. I didn't, don't need to wait for any emotion. I didn't, don't need to wait for any feeling. I know what I know, what I know, what I know this morning. He's a while, he's well, and he's alive. He's the miracle worker. Hallelujah. I know it this morning. If you're going to wait for a feeling before you start worshiping and dancing, cry for you, my brother. Cry for you, my sister. When I just think of the goodness of God, I want to dance. Oh, hallelujah. When I just think what He has done for me, I want to dance this morning. And you know what? I don't wait for a feeling. But when I start dancing, when I start shouting, when I start worshiping, suddenly I feel a feeling. I feel that something is stirring my spirit. I feel that I want to continue. I feel I don't want to stop. I feel I am connecting with heaven. But you cannot worship based on your emotions, on your feelings, on your circumstances. It works the other way around. Psalm 95, verse 1. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let's make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let's come before His presence with thanksgiving thanksgiving let's make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise praise so remember what we said worship is thanksgiving it's praise let's continue for the lord is a great god and a great king above all gods do i see him no so what do i need to do i need to believe the moment i start believing i'm walking into the spirit I cannot see it yet. I know I've got a word of God that this house will move into revival. I know that I have a word of God that this house will not be big enough to contain what God is going to do. Are we that yet there? No, we're not yet there. But when I see in the Spirit and I start worshiping in the Spirit and I know I can stand on the Word of God, I can see how we're pushing out walls. I can see how we're trying to, to arrange for traffic and parking and get everybody seated. That's what I can see. I can see that God is about to do something in this house. Hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! Start, turn to your neighbor and say, start worshiping in the Spirit. Worship is actually faith in action. Worshiping God in the Spirit is faith in action. Thanksgiving is acknowledging what God has done. Praise is acknowledging God for who He is. Worshiping is acknowledging God for what He's going to do. He 
You see, we confuse this stuff. We're going to go into a praise and worship session. And we never get past thanksgiving. We never get past the praise. Worshipping is start seeing what other people can't see. Worshipping is thanking God for what you're going to receive, although I have not yet have it. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you, Lord. Um, Mark, who spoke about it yesterday. Thanksgiving joy. That's what it is. Thank God for what he has done. Let's praise God for his goodness. But let's worship him in the spirit. Because I need to start seeing in the spirit. I need to start spiritsing in the spirit. Pastor, I'm struggling three, four hours. I just want to feel the presence of God. No, you don't need to feel the presence of God. The God Almighty is already here. He's in your heart. All that you need to do is start worshiping for what He's going to do. For what you have not received yet. Start worshiping. God, I honor you. I praise you. I thank you for what you are going to do. You're going to fill this house. I thank you for a mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this place. I thank you, Lord, for salvation. I thank you, Lord, that this place is going to be too small. Lord, I thank you for each and every promise on this house will come to pass. Lord, I thank you. We are due for the biggest revival ever. We thank you, Lord, that this place will shake the wasteland. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you see when we start all together and we start worshiping, we start seeing in the spirit, this will be a different place. I said it yesterday morning at the prayer meeting. You see, we're so stuck in what we don't have, what we don't, haven't received, our problems, our situation, I find our finances, our sickness, we get so stuck in it. I said it yesterday morning, in the, in the garden, Adam and Eve, they had everything. They had the presence of God. They had the fullness of God. They had authority. They had glory. They had anointing. They, there's nothing missing except one thing. You're not allowed to eat off. What does the enemy say? You've got nothing because you don't have that one thing. That's how the enemy works. But you see... If the enemy tells you for this morning you don't have finances, you say, I'm going to start worshiping in the Spirit. I'm going to start worshiping in the Spirit. And you're going to say, Lord, I worship you for a financial breakthrough. I haven't have, have it yet, but I thank you. Lord, I'm worshiping you for revival in this place. Lord, I know that you exist. Lord, I know that you are here. Lord, I know that you take care for me. I know that you are my helper. I know that you are my shepherd. I know that I am more than a conqueror. I know that I am the head and I am not the tail. I know what I know, what I know, what I know. Sorry, I'm only at slide 5 now. Psalm 95 verse 4. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The high hills and the strength of the hills are his also. The sea is his. He made it and his hand formed the dry land. Oh, come let us worship and bow down. Whenever the Bible talks about worship... It talks about bowing down before God, acknowledging that He is the King. Acknowledge that you got up to a point where you can't do it anymore. You need to hand over. And see, the moment you hand over, the Spirit of God takes over. But as long as you are in control, the Spirit cannot take control. Lord, I'm at a point where I can't do anything. I hand it over to you. You are in control now. I hand my finances over to you. But I'm so joyful this morning. I'm so glad this morning because I know I serve a great, big, wonderful God. Oh, hallelujah. 
Oh, come, let's worship and bow and let's kneel before the Lord our King. It is, it. Oh, hallelujah. I can just feel God is in this house. I can just feel that God is in this house. I wrote that here, God's presence, it's not a feeling, it's a fact. You hear what I'm saying? God's presence is not a feeling. And it's okay if you feel it. It's okay if your emotions feel it. But I want to declare that if you're only going to focus on when you feel, me, feel Him, and emotionally I can feel He's here, it amazes me. A lot of people will say, I went to that church, I went to that church, I went to that church. I could not feel God. There's a problem. Because my Bible doesn't say that God is in the church. He doesn't say that God is in the building. He says He's here. I am the temple. So either if you don't feel the presence of God wherever you enter, you need to ask God what is wrong here. Because where you enter, people should feel the presence of God. Where you enter, people should say, there's something different about you. Went yesterday to a nursery. And I said to Anna get one of those books. I want to sew this book to this lady. We got out and said, I want to sew this book. She said, you must be children of God. You must be children of God. Oh, how wonderful. How wonderful. You see, if you start seeking the presence of God in places, in buildings, in assemblies, in denominations, you need to go back to your inner room and ask God to start here. Yeah. I remember years ago, I was in the assembly and I said, Leere, ek is moe vir hierdie doodsheid in hierdie gebouw. I complained to the pastor. I complained to my wife, poor wife, when I leave church. I complained about everything that's wrong in that church. And I complained and I complained and I complained and I find fault with everything. And my wife is always clever. She says, gaan bid daar oor. And if she says that, then I know I'm in trouble. Because I'm at a point where she can't handle me and she knows who can handle me. And I went into my prayer room and I said, God, why did you send me to the dode plek? I hou van a kerk waar a fear is. And the Heere said, the Heere said for me, ek het jou gestuur om die fear aan te steek. There's my wife. I went back and I, I, I've made sure and I went back to the pastor. I said, Pastor, I want to apologize. I want to repent. I criticized everyone and I went to the word. I went to God and he gave me word that I need to ignite the fire. The pastor said to me, you don't know how many months I'm praying for somebody. I said, Lord, just send somebody to ignite the fire in this place. And the next time they started to sing, everybody was, on Jesus, on ye. When they started, I can so play. I said, I can so play. And the next moment, I see a crazy woman start running around the building. I can play. I can on Jesus. And after that service, there was fire in that place. I want to declare it this morning. God is waiting for you to ignite the fire. The moment that you are frustrated in your ministry or wherever you are, it's a sign that you need to start doing something about it. Oh, hallelujah. I don't think I'm going to get to preach today. Slide number seven. And I'm going to probably end now. You are glorifying God, worshiping God, by reflecting His nature, by being like God in your daily life. Worshiping God in spirit, in spirit is not just what you do in church, but how you live your life. Worshiping God in truth is knowing, acknowledging that He is God. 
what is it? God is saying, I'm looking for true worshipers. Who are these true worshipers? Annemarie, this is when we come to the point, we don't know what we can do. Then we say, we know somebody that can help me. And I start glorifying for what he's going to do. That's worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Because I know the truth. I know the one that's going to take me through this. There's no storm that God has not taken me through. I'm not saying this morning that you're not going to get troubles and problems and situations. You're going to get many of them. But that... It's an opportunity for true worshipers to show what they are made of. In Christ, you are a true worshiper by default. You do not need to do something to begin worshiping in the spirit and truth. You just need to know. You are already worshiping in spirit and truth. You, your, your life, body, worship, praise, thanksgiving are all worship activities that are a sweet aroma to God. Because you have a new spirit filled with the Holy Spirit and able to give God what He is looking for. One Corinthians six verse sixteen to seventeen. Do no, do you not know? That he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her body. Pastor Bauer praat hier nou. Nee, dit lyk van my tyd, ons is makkeliker om met prostitute om te gaan, as om met die geest van die Heere om te gaan. Because we make it so complicated that nobody knows what worship is all about. I want to declare it this morning. It's two things. Knowing that God exists and trusting God for the outcome. I can't see him. Maybe I can't feel him. But I want to declare it this morning. The more you walk in the spirit, the more you can feel him. Because I can feel his presence here. Pastor, I can not the year for more and the black and far. Which is called as that. Which is called as that. My scope, me. The presence of God is here. Where two or three gathers in my name, my Father will be there. I am here. My wife is here. Pastor Richard is here. Niku is here. We're all born again. And the Bible says when we gather in His name, He's there. Then you need to ask yourself, why don't you feel Him if you want to feel Him? But what I want to say this morning again, it's not about feeling. It's about knowing. For it is said, the two will become one. But he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit or more literally one spirit. My spirit becomes one spirit with God. And that's what worship does. It unites my spirit and God's spirit. Pastor, what's fout with you? How will you so dance? How will you so spread? Because, because there's communion that's taking place. My spirit is united with God's spirit. Let's do this last, last scripture. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14 to 16. The unspiritual self, just as it's by its nature can't receive the gifts of God's Spirit. There's no capacity for it. So your body in the flesh, you cannot receive what God wants to do for you. Because what is the flesh seeing? The flesh are seeing empty chairs this morning. The flesh is seeing this morning your financial difficulty. Your flesh is seeing your sickness this morning. Your flesh is seeing your children that's not saved yet. Your flesh is seeing all these problems and all the, and that's, that's human nature. There's nothing wrong with that. But the Bible says the problem with the flesh, it cannot worship. 
Because you can only worship God in spirit. So you need to tell this flesh, you need to submit now in the presence of God, although I'm feeling sick, although I'm feeling bad, although financially I'm not making it, I'm going to start worshiping God for who He is. He is the healer. He is the provider. He is going to take care of me. And then you move from a fleshly into the spirit. We have a and the moment you get that right, you will see the flesh will say, the flesh will start. Hey, my, I can only miss tall stuff. It's what can you want my foot to? It's warm me. Oh, ah, 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 Spirit can be known only by spirit. God's spirit and our spirits is in open communication. Do you think if you complain? about all your issues and all your problems that you are connecting. For sure you can cry out for God for help. I'm not saying you're not allowed to do that. For sure you can tell God about, about all your problems. But you need to move into the third realm. You need to move from worshiping to praise into, uh, from um, thanksgiving, praise into worshiping. Well, how? It doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter how it looks like. I'm going to move into the Spirit. And do, how do I move into the Spirit? To see the perfect work of Christ, what Christ has done for you on the cross. Spiritually alive, we have access to everything God's Spirit is doing. Kerk, as jy vanmorgen vat wat ek jou vanmorgen hier leer, gaan jy nooit weer die self te wees nie. Never a same again. Never. It's not difficult. It's not difficult. I'm just feeling, you know, I think you're doing the Sunday prayer, ach, Saturday prayer, I'm giving you an assignment. I feel it in the spirit. Saturday morning, we are going to worship. We're going to start thanking God for everything we don't have and we don't see yet. We're going to connect in the spirit to the hell. We're going to do it this morning already, so don't worry, we'll get there now. God's spirit is to, and can't be judged by the unspirit critics. That's what's amazing me. The moment the spirit of God flows, Dr. Marius, people start criticizing. That you see how he dances. That you see that person. I want to say this this morning. If you see people worshiping and they're praising God, keep your hands off them and forget about that and focus on God. Focus on God. Because the way that I worship is not the same that Anna Marie would worship. I want to show it. I want to tell it. She's maybe still a die in a sort do it so a mossy. Maybe she's more in the spirit than what I am in the spirit. You see, if we all just focus on our relationship with God and forget about all everything. The Bible says there will be people that's going to criticize you when you move into the spiritly realm. They will. Isaiah's question, is there anyone around you who knows God's spirit? Anyone who knows what he is doing has been answered. Christ know it and we have Christ's spirit. Matthew 15 verse 9, those people make a big show of saying the right things, but their heart isn't in it. Singing the right words, Lord, we honor you. Lord, we bring you praise. I worship thee, I worship thee. Ek wonder wat gebeur daar by die huis. Ek wonder wat gaan by die, ek wonder of die hoenerkie ok is. I worship thee. Uh, ek wil ons met sien, ek is heilig. I worship We 
we're laughing about it, but you see, the Bible says these people are make a big make a big show of saying the right things, doing the right things, but what God says, but their heart isn't in it. They act that they are worshiping me, but they don't mean it. And yesterday evening, I was sitting at my table and said, Lord, so many times I just sang. But whatever's on that board, Lord, help me that I forget about everything, that I forget about all the struggles and all the worries of this world. But I want to focus on you. However, I sing, I worship. I want to sing it out of my heart. I worship you, Lord. Lord, I, want, I, I worship you. Then the enemy comes and says, you've got so many problems, so many situations, your work, whatever. Lord, I worship you because I know you're going to take care of it. Lord, I worship you. Lord, as the owner of brand, I know you give me an energy. I worship you. I worship you. Your kids are not here. I worship you. They're going to be saved. Hallelujah. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. I worship. Who wants to worship this morning? Stand with me this morning and just where you are, start worshiping me this morning. Say, Lord, I worship you. 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 I worship. I worship. Lord, I worship you. I worship you, Lord. I worship you. Oh, I worship you. I worship you. Is there another song that says, I worship you, something like that on tonight? Oh, oh, I exalt. What's in your Just start exalting him this morning. Just start exalting you this morning. Oh, I exalt you. 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 Forget about the person behind you. Forget about the person in front of you. Forget about. Oh Lord, I exalt thee. Oh, I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. 